Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here on this Zoom call in order to celebrate the start of Cineo Arte, an event that this year, for obvious reasons, we have to celebrate online. Dear friends, researchers, lovers of science and art, thank you so much for being here on this online event. As I was saying, thank you for joining us virtually to celebrate the start of this fourth edition of Senio Arte 2021. As you know, this is an initiative made possible by the support of the Banco Santander Foundation. This year, in addition, we also count on the support from the British em Embassy, something that makes us really, really happy and that we are very grateful for. Every year, with this initiative, what we do is match a scientist from our excellentes photo book with an excellent artist. We then invite the latter to meet the former, and we invite them both to engage in conversation, to engage with each other's work, and to draw inspiration from each other's domains, hopefully finding some common ground between scientific research and artistic creation. I want to share with you some history on Senio Arte. There have been three editions leading to this one. The first year of Senio Arte was 2018, and we had two excellent women, the late Margarita Salas, a pioneer in molecular biology, and Eva Lotz, on the other hand, a visual artist who was awarded the Spanish National Award of Visual Arts. She made a stunning video that you can watch on our website, and uh, work that is called 59 plus 1 that will be displayed at Arco, the art fair this year as well, along with the others, uh, the other works from the other artists. The second edition took place in 2019, and we had two excellent men, the quantum physicist Ignacio Sirac, director of the Max Planck Institute, Institute of Quantum Optics in Munich, and Tim Amadoz, one of the most important photographers in the Spanish scene. He was also a recipient of the National Award of Photography and Photo España Prize, among other awards. He made a photograph out of which 30 photographers were made. In the third edition last year, we had the honor of uh, hosting an outstanding pair of excellent people, the artist Carmen Calvo, National Prize of Visual Arts, re who represented Spain in the Venetia Mostra in 1997. The same year, by the way, that Juan Luis Arzuaga, Palo anthropologist and scientific director of the Museum of Human Evolution, received the Principe de Asturias Award. Carmen made, in, inspired by this meeting, a series of four pictures combining collage, photography, clay, wax, and pencils, and they will also be displayed at Cineo Artes stand in the Arco Art Fair this year. In this fourth edition, we have the immense pleasure of counting with biologist Sarah Teichmann from the Wilkins Sanger Institute in the UK and visual artist Daniel Canogar. Sarah Teichmann is a computational biologist leading the Human Cell Atlas, which is a huge collaboration joining the work of almost 300 labs in our world in order to map out the dozens of trillions of cells of hundreds of different kinds in the human body. Teichmann is also the head of cellular genetics in the Wellcome Trust Center Institute in Cambridge, UK. And she is also the lead of the European Institute of Bioinformatics. She works hand in hand with coders, physicists, and mathematicians. And she has been awarded a series of awards, including the Amber Gold Medal in 2015, which is uh, the award given by the European Organization of Molecular Biology for young researchers. On the other hand, Daniel Canogar is an artist born in Madrid. He has two studios. He works in both Madrid and Los Angeles, US. As an artist, he works with installations, sculptures, and new media. His latest projects explore the material nature of digital files 
and they obsolescence sense the fact that our te technological devices become outdated as a social paradigm as well as the influence of big data in contemporary society. His installation usually feature lights and they engage with the architectural space that contain them. He has done several permanent projects such as Sandrill for the airport of Tampa, Florida, Acrios for the Sobrato Foundation in Silicon Valley, and Ripple for the Fidelity Investments Lobby in Boston, US. He is currently working about a project about climate change for the new headquarters of Novartis in Basel, Switzerland, and an interactive in installation at a big scale for the Spanish pavilion in the Universal exhibition on Dubai in October this year. The piece made for the neo art is called Fulguration. In this virtual panel, aside from the two protagonists, we will also have Maria Blasco, director of CENIO, a molecular biologist herself and biochemist. She leads her own research group at CENIO, studying cancer and aging. And I would like to highlight that Maria has supported this initiative from the start. She has contributed to looking for financing and she firmly believes that art can draw inspiration from science, from the great questions of science. We also have here with us today, Hugh Elliott, the UK ambassador to Spain and Andorra since August, 2019. He joined the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in the year 1989. And since then, he has, hold, he has held different offices, both in London and in embassies. In Madrid, he was responsible for EU and economic affairs between 1991 and 1996. He has also worked in the private sector. And he came back to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in 2013 to uh, hold the Office of Communications Director and then Director of European Affairs. His latest role before become, becoming the ambassador to Spain was the Director of the Communications and Stakeholders at the Department of for Exiting the European Area Union. Personally, he is also married to a Spanish woman and he has two children, Edward and Alba. We also have here with us Susana Blas, art historian, curator, and screenwriter for Metropolis, a show from the Spanish public TV. We also are our gratitude to Borja Baselga, the director of the Banco Santander Foundation, that carries out their work in the fields of culture, environment, research, and social action. We are also very lucky because we have uh, here today as a moderator, Javier Diaz Guardiola, journalist, and I will not rub you up any more time. I'll leave you here with them. Thank you, Amparo. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. It is great to be speaking about these topics. Thank you, Sarah, for being here. We missed you yesterday when we were preparing this session, and we hope to see you in Madrid very soon. We also have here with us Daniel Canogar, but also the director of Neo Arte and the director of Senio Maria Blasco, Amparo Garrido, the curator, Susana Blas, and the collaborating institutions, the Banco Santander Foundation and the UK Embassy. I really hope that you live extraordinary moments, said the motto of the latest Venice Biennale, and how if we have learned something from the pandemic is that different realities and appearances can meet. We have been asked to have faith, which is a term of religious connotations in science, and we owe to one scientist that in a record time we have different vaccines at our disposal in order to fight the pandemic. In this time, we have also felt closer to scientists and healthcare workers, elevating them to the category of heroes. 
However, something that has also helped us get through the pandemic has been to find a safe haven in culture. We have consumed audiovisual productions, theater, and also art, even if through screens. Art teaches us how to be human. And in this uncertain times we find ourselves in, this is crucial. Today, two very different and seemingly distant realities are joined together again in the Neo Arte and show us that they have a lot more in common than we have thought. This project acts as a way of joining together the world of art and the wider public and showing the citizens that we have a lot more in, uh, we have a lot more that we can understand from art. So Neo Arte translates the great dilemmas, the great ideas and the concepts of the art world for a wider audience. As Amparo said, we are, we are together with Daniel Tanogar and Sarah Teichmann today. We have had Eva Loz, Carmen Calvo, Juan Luis Arzuaga, Margarita Salas in various editions, as Amparo already said. And we are going to speak today with them in order to know more about the current Senio Arte project. Maria, I'm going to start with you since you are the director. So since we are talking about seemingly independent realities, I wanted to ask you how someone with a science background becomes interested in art. Well, I have always been interested in art and I think scientists and arts share different traits. We have to explore chartered territories in our work. We have to try to bring some light in order to discover these unknown questions. I think both scientists and artists do this. So I have always been very inspired by art. And well, I have been attending several art talks, for example, at Museo del Prado. And I was able to realize there that the great art is inspired by the great existential, transcendental or religious uh, topics. And these the great transcendental questions are also the ones that drive scientific research. So I thought that there was something to explore here as a connection between science and art. This initiative seemed ambitious at first, but finally it crystallized in the Neo Arte thanks to the work of Amparo Garrido and the support of Banco Santander Foundation. This is the fourth year of Ceneo Arte already, and the initiative has different aims. The main one is to communicate the importance of science, communicating the importance of science to the public through art, but also bringing art close together to science, because these works are exhibited at the Neo Research Center in Madrid, which is one of the leading research centers of, in the world. Uh, and where, um, well, we have many researchers working with us. So it's also interesting that they are able to access these the Neo Arte works since they are exposed here. But we also wanted to bring scientists and artists closer to each other so that science can become a source of inspiration for art. How does a project like this start, Maria? Four years ago, what did it take for a project like Senio Arte to get going? Well, it took will, mostly. We had an idea at first, and we, we were also very excited to do something like this. So we got to work. And we we received we were we are grateful for the support that we have received for from Banco Santander Foundation. We have Borja Baselga here. We are very grateful to him. So we have had the funds to commission works of art as well as the support from Senio. We were surprised really that artists uh, well, very high level artists who have been awarded national awards and who are very prominent in the art scene, they have been, they have responded to our calls that they have 
felt curious, they have felt interested in what we were doing. I also wanted to say thank you to them for their generosity because the work of art that is produced by artists for Sunio and, and Sol in, in the market, well, all these proceeds help finance cancer research. So I also wanted to thank the artists for their generosity for collaborating with us. And this year we are going to present the four works at the Arco Art Fair which is a milestone for us and it's a culmination of what we were trying to do at Sanio Arte. Thank you. Before we talk about this year's project, I wanted to ask you, who is this for? Well, this is aimed at citizens, mainly. We want them to be able to understand the importance of science and reflect on it through art. But this is also aimed at both artists and scientists. So we can generate a common space where they can meet each other, where they can exchange ideas and where maybe a, a work of art might arise, which is what we have been trying to do. And at the same time, it's beneficial to science because through the sale of this work, we can finance research. Sarah, I am going to talk to you now. I am benefiting from the interpretation. So I just wanted to congratulate you on, the, on your work on the Human Cell Atlas. Uh, could you maybe tell us briefly what the Human Cell Atlas is about? The Human Cell Atlas is an initiative to map the cells of the human body using single cell genomics and spatial technologies interpreted by computational methods. And this project came about because of the, the development <clears throat> in new genomics technologies that have been emerging over the last decade that can describe a single cell at full genomic breadth. And this single cell genomics technology gives much more detailed insight and understanding of our cells compared to previous technologies in genomics or microscopy. And understanding our cells at this level of detail is incredibly valuable for understanding disease mechanisms for engineering cells in the dish, either as research reagents or for regenerative me medicine, and also for combating disease such as infection, including SARS-CoV-2, immunity, and also cancer. And in 2016, Aviv Raghav and I co-organized a kickoff meeting as a, as a call to the scientific community. It was in London with 100 participants and since then, this initiative has grown to over 2,000 members. It's an interdisciplinary biomedical community that spans clinical scientists, clinicians, gen genome biologists and biotechnologists, and computational biologists. Almost five years ago, uh, as, a, as a community, we've mapped almost 50 million cells from 26 tissues, that's, that's over half of the, the, the tissues and organs in the human body. And we've learned about hundreds of cell types and cell states. And that's thanks to a collaboration between, as I mentioned, people who are, who are from the clinical side, technology side, computational side. And that interdisciplinary collaboration is really analogous in some ways to, to Daniel Kanagar's work and his team of artists that, that include software developers, there's the video technology and so on that's given rise to full creation. So it's a really an interdisciplinary collaborative effort. And, and that's led to the discovery, as I mentioned, of new cell types and cell states in, in many tissues of the body, the airways, the kidney, the heart, the brain, and so on, and a much rate to achieve the function of the tissues and organs. And, and one recent example is where we've used data from my lab and from the whole human cell atlas community to map which specific cells are infected by SARS-CoV-2 across the body. That includes the nose and the lower airways into the parenchyma of the lung. It includes also tissues and cells in the gastrointestinal tract, kidneys, heart, and so on. And, and that, that information was, was really valuable in the pandemic response to understand in detail where the virus could be entering. 
for this collaboration with, with Daniel Kanagar's team and, and the video installation about the human cell atlas, we discussed in a lot of detail our work on mapping the, the, the tissues within the heart. So the free walls of the four chambers of the heart. And this was an international collaboration. So I, I, I love also the global uh, element of this CNL art working with scientists from, from different parts of the world. And my own background like Daniel's is international. Um, and uh, um, this was the, the, the cell atlas of the heart. This, this work was a, a collaboration between uh, research groups in Germany, the UK and the US. And what we discovered was that there was a surprising heterogeneity many different types of cardiomyocytes make up the free walls of the four chambers of the heart. There are up to five different types in each of the, the free walls of the atria and ventricles. And that was a, a real surprise. And understanding those different cardiomyocyte types helps us to understand the different um, strengths of, for instance, the, the left ventricle versus the right atrium of the, the free walls because they have different physical characteristics. We also learned about other cell types, immune cells, cells of the blood vessels and, and structural cells that contribute to, the, to the, the heart of the cells inside the heart. And we discussed that in a lot of detail with Daniel's team. And um, you know, it was a huge pleasure to communicate with him uh, about the heart uh, cells and the heart cell atlas, but also about um, uh, the whole, all the work of the human cell atlas community that includes um, many different organs, all the organs of the body. And it's really amazing to see the Fulgurations artwork now come to life. And, and it's been an incredibly exciting experience. And um, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful. I'm, I'm honored and humbled. My last question for you, Sarah, is that you have worked with over 2,000 scientists, but Daniel Canogas. Uh, view is different from uh, that of researchers. Uh, what is it like when an artist comes into a team of researchers? It was fantastic. The, the dialogue was incredibly interesting and, and um, fun. And it made us think about our work in, in, in a different way. And um, it forced us to, to be really clear about what it is that we're discovering, what's the structure of the data, what is it telling us. And um, the way he's interpreted it has also, you know, made me think about um, made me think about our results in a different way. And and also in, you know, in a, in a cultural context of, of what it means to build an atlas. So overall, you know, it's been it's been a huge amount of fun. It's been incredibly enriching and valuable, and I, I'm so grateful to uh, CNI, CNIO, to uh, to Maria Blasco, you know, for the initiative and 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 all the supporters and, and the whole team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Daniel. I am going now to speak with. Uh, virus that got into the organism of your team, Sarah. Daniel Canoga, please tell us about uh, your experience with Sarah, with her team, and how do you translate the work that they are doing and make it intelligible for people such as Susana and me, who, are may, who may be interested in the art world, but also to the wider audience. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you for describing me as a pathogen, because this is really what I like to be described as a social and artistic pathogen. I think Sarah has been immensely generous with her, with the collaboration with us. For me, it has been really impactful. The conversations I had with her were very revealing for me and that I had the fact that I had the possibility to deep, to have a deep dive into the Human Cell Atlas project was something that had a great impact on me. The ambition, the scale of it, the how the project is absolutely excessive. It's like a huge Google Maps of all the cells in the human body. It's really great work. And my first reaction was to feel absolutely humbled and I also felt intimidated 
how could I, a small artist, could even dare to to observe or research this project, such an endeavor? And what could I bring from my artistic perspective? These challenges are absolutely frightening to me, but after a first phase of panic, there is also a will to tackle this challenge. And I just, well, follow the, pro the process. And it really feels like a go and return trip because on a first leg, I, I try to become closer to all these ideas, comprehend how all these uh, uh, genomic expressions, how these cells are being mapped out and uh, how it is uh, done also in material terms with these uh, little vials that remind me of the LEDs that I use in my installations, for example, because they, they look like small diodes, like small vials. And this, in a certain regard, this helped me also get into it. But then there's a return trip because I had to bring all this to my world. At the same time, I was trying to understand this transformation in with regard to these material technologies and how they transform into algorithmic systems. And this ties together with the world of big data. Um, and this is like the big data of life, pretty much. How can you manage, organize, classify this excessive amount of information that digital technology allows us to produce in the first place? I also wanted to allude to the material, tangible nature of the, our systems of storing information as books used to be. And the sculpture is presented as a set of boxes that allude to the book as the original support for knowledge since Gutenberg and the invention of the printing press. This has been the primary place where we have stored knowledge and information. And from there we have, we, we go to the present day cloud, this ethereal place where information is stored and the human cell atlas connects so about 300 laboratories. It's like a huge crowdsourcing project because it would be impossible for a single team or a single person to do. So uh, Sarah, she is in contact with these 2000 researchers. Each one of them is mapping a specific part of the body. So this is really very representative of this information society that we are living in. And her team is creating this atlas, but it is a digital atlas. There is an algorithm, and this algorithm has similar patterns to the human genetics. In fact, there is like switches in cells, and these allows them to express one gene or the other and to behave differently from one another. And I am a coder, so this is something similar to what I do, because you can establish rules and then make the artwork do one thing or the other. So um, this work for creations is also inspired in life, the game, and I also think is very present. There's a big presence of the behaviors of today's hyper-connected society. Uh, we see how cells are behaving and there's parallels with all kinds of social and uh, behaviors and how maybe memes or cat videos or emojis can spread like a virus. In fact, they go viral. And this is something we can observe in the ways uh, ants for example, communicate with one another. And this looks almost like magic uh, because a message can be distributed among them in a very mysterious way. 
and we can we may also observe how people circulate and talk to each other and interact in the Gran Via in, in Madrid. I am now realizing that I might be going over time, but basically I wanted to say that fulgurations is our work that resonates with the behavior of cells and that aims at connecting artistic algorithmic coding with the behavior of cells. I also tried to create an experience for the audience, maybe for an audience who doesn't deeply, fully understand how a cell works, but maybe they may be able to uh, comprehend in an intuitive way how it works by observing the work of art and all these expressions, these connections. And obviously there is also uh, something to do with COVID because it's a paradigm that has contaminated not only in a literal sense, but also our worldview. I wanted to reiterate my gratitude to Sarah Teichmann for her generosity, for her time, for opening my eyes to a new field, which is computational biology. I will continue to work with these concepts in my work in the future. It's a pleasure to listen to both of you. I wanted to ask a question. You talk about panic, about stage fright when you approach a new, a new topic. So how do you feel when you, when you tackle this new area of work? Well, I have worked with the excessive amount of information, which is something that has always interested me. Um, how we struggle to process huge amounts of information. I have been working with this with, for, for years. And specifically with big data, I have seen these in the uh, world of news, infoxication, also with the financial markets, shopping too, e-shopping. Uh, these are projects I have done in the past, and I have always tried to generate an artistic experience that translates this big, huge volumes of information. Because one of the great challenges we face today as humans is how we tackle this information, how we process it, how can, we can tell the important from the, ban from the banal and how we are able to classify and tidy up all this information in our minds. And in the work that that Sarah is doing is, is like a, the last frontier because um, I have always thought in technologic terms and now I am starting to think in biologic terms too. There is a new field opening up for me. I also wanted to insist that Senio Arte um, because I, Amparo Garrido, the curator, actually talked me talked to me over a year and a half ago, and the Neo Arte is a modest project, I would say. It is a project that issues from a specific collaboration between a scientist and an artist, and I think this has a great potential. I really hope that all these projects receive the, the support they need because I think that these kind of, of conversations or of projects may offer us with the keys for the great challenges of our future. I wanted to con congratulate Amparo, Senio Arte, Maria, and also the sponsors, of course, Fundación Banco Santander and the Embassy. I really hope that this project grows in the future because I really think that this research has a very humble beginning, but that may have a great impact uh, for these huge challenges in our future. Well, Daniel, I just wanted to say that you are a good pathogen. You're like, you know, like good cholesterol. Thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, will now give the floor to the British ambassador. Good morning. Just in the line of what Daniel was saying, I wanted to, I would like to know why it is important that institutions such as you participate in this project. 
Well, first of all, good morning to everyone. I wanted to thank this opportunity, this invitation for us to collaborate. I think there's several reasons. And first, first we have a, a long-standing relationship with Ceneo that predates myself, predates me, in fact, and it's a collaboration that we appreciate a lot. We are always there to try to promote bilateral collaboration, cooperation in scientific matters between Spain and the UK. This kind of collaboration stays mostly international and, and to a great extent, even after we have left the European Union, we are still involved in very much international projects. And this is also a feature of British science and research. And also because of, of COVID, we all find ourselves in a moment when we have where we have science at the front of our minds. We think about it a lot. And visibly we owe so much to science in, in our day to day. Uh, whereas mm, we may sometimes not realize how much we actually owe to science and how much it, it actually gives us. I also think that at the same time during lockdown, during this period of restrictions in the pandemic, we need to find our soul again because our souls have been damaged to some extent by this situation. And, and so when the collaboration was proposed to me, I thought it was fantastic, interesting. You never know what's going to come out of it. I really loved that Sarah said, you said, Sarah, that it made you think about your results in a different way, which is fantastic. And this is what it is about, to mix these worlds uh, together. And more importantly, you also said that you had fun, which is very important nowadays. Are there similar initiatives in the UK or is the Neo Arte uh, a special case? Well, there is a bit of both. We have a long history as a nation of uh, working in the public understanding of science. In many occasions through history, this has translated into a collaboration or cooperation with different worlds. For example, in the Festival of Britain in 1951, it was a relaunch uh, in a hopeful moment post-war. There were many prominent sciences and this event was a, a mix or a forum to bring together the arts and humanities. So there's forces that have promoted these understanding, such as the Science Museum, for example. We have several, several examples of these intersections between art and science. The difference between these two domains is more semantic than anything, actually. We can also share a link on the chat. It was an event that was made by the Wellcome Trust and the Golden Institute in Cambridge. They promoted a cooperation for 10 years in where they invited three artists, three contemporary artists, to collaborate with researchers from the Institute and the works. Well, they were fantastic. I won't, I won't go into detail because we are running out of time, but we will share the resource over the chat so other people present can check it out. So there is a long-standing tradition, maybe not in, a, in such a specific domain, but there's a lot of interesting conversations going on that we would like to continue supporting. I have heard that we are getting 10 minutes extra. And now I wanted to ask you, Susanna, thank you so much, Ambassador. 
Susanna, you and I are translators because we translate the work of artists into a language for the common audience, for the public. Daniel makes it easy for us, though, because his work is complex, but it can also be grasped quite easily. Uh, so tell us about how you tackled his talent. Well, first of all, I, was to, I wanted to say thank you for the invitation. I will answer your question, Javier, but I wanted first and foremost to say thank you to Daniel Canogar for thinking of me in order to write a text about his work and also thank you and Pado for counting on me. In our family we are also going through a phase of cancer treatment in the case of my mother so we are very thankful to be able to participate in this it's very touching for me. It was great to have the chance to collaborate here. I also already said this to Daniela Namparo, but thank you. And now, with regard to your question, Javier, it's true that maybe Daniel makes it, makes it a little bit easier because he has this uh, theoretical side. Um, he's an artist that has always been very concerned of with, you know, making theories and, and developing a theoretical framework of his work and people like us who value art have, have greatly appreciated this. In the almost three decades I have been following Daniel's work, at least very closely for the last two decades, it's this relationship of technology with the body and with the material nature has always been very present, but this has also been present in other artists at the end of the 1990s. However, in the case of other artists, this concept became something secondary, but in the case of Daniel, this became more and more central to his work. He was really very interesting in assessing what was happening to identity and to what makes us human with relation to technology. But instead of doing it through traditional methods, he was also incorporating technology progressively into his work, always with a critical standpoint, however. Something very original about his work, too, is this nostalgic element. He has talked about um, seeing, you know, up, outdated phones, CDs that are left behind. He feels really pain when he sees these devices. And this has also shaped Daniel's work and to get into this algorithmic generative works where he's already speaking about our new identity, uh, this digital eye where that we have and with which we are functioning already every day. He's incorporating these new concepts, but while maintaining a very high artistic level. Okay, so just so we know um, where, what league we are playing, so to say, we have had Eva Lotz, we have had Carmen Calvo, so this is a dream team. What kind of artists are we speaking about in Fenio Arte? Well, we are talking obviously about excellence. Uh, we also have very different regards here, different perspectives that have nevertheless something in common. This engagement with the society they live in. Daniel, as well as his predecessors, are artists that do not live isolated, which can be a, a very legit choice, but these artists are opening up constantly to society. They are always open to dialogue, to exchanging, throwing questions into the open. And this is very evident in Daniel's work. This is what art has uh, in this dialogue between art and science. Maybe art has the possibility to connect with others in a more intuitive way. So I would say that this is something they have in common, aside from being excellent artists, that they are very porous to society's uh, influence and to dialogue with society. 
Um, Borja, we left you to the end. Thank you so much, Susana. You know that the best always goes last in television. So I wanted to inquire about the activity of Banco Santander Foundation because you are very active in different domains. So how, the, how do the values of the foundation translate into its initiatives? Thank you so much, Javier. Maria was saying it in very beautifully. We have to explore uncharted territories. And we are also trying to do this from our foundation. We don't want to become an institution that just gives away some cash to different projects. We like to be uh, involved in the projects and co-create with them. And with the NEO, it's, it's a great pleasure to work with them. We have brought researchers from the United Kingdom into Spain. And this is remarkable because the flux is normally going in the opposite direction. But it's remarkable and it's a sign of Sanio's importance. And we think that things can be done differently. So when Maria talked to us about this project, we also found it to be a very interesting way of making science uh, more accessible, more to the public as well as connecting with art. And moreover, this allows us to uh, get to secure funding for Senio. Um, it is uh, an institution where fundraising campaigns work remarkably well, and they have this initiative Friends of Senio. They have this uh, social, body that engages not only with the ideas, but that also secures funds in order to support research. Yes, is, is your foundation tied to a particular kind or domain in their sponsorship? Well, we have three big blocks, so to say we have an arts and culture area, research and environment, and social action. But for example, in the social action area, we have gone from making simple donation to organizations to help them through their digitalization process. We have found that we have searched for a topic where we could bring some added value. And we have found that some organizations were lagging behind in their transition to digital media. So we started offering them training into the digitalization. When the pandemic came along, this proved to be fundamental. So this was a support that we managed to provide for many NGOs and we help them in their digital transition. So we think that there are many areas. In all areas, we are able to, to map out these uncharted territories. Thank you so much for being with us, Borja. I am going finally to give the floor again to Maria. Because we wanted to highlight that the works of these four years of Senio Arte that have brought along for, for outstanding works and proposals have been have always been exhibited in the premises of Senio itself. But this year they will be displayed at the Arco Art Fair. So you, you can now invite us to visit the stand that Senio has at Arco and, and tell us a bit about it. Yes, it's very exciting. We have been following the setup of all works in, in Arco. It's the first time a, a research organization has a stand there. And we are very grateful for this space to exhibit our works. I would like to invite you all to, to go to Arco. It starts on Wednesday and it will last until Sunday. And in particular on Friday, there will be a presentation of Senio Arte at Arco. Many of us present today will also be there then. And it will be an opportunity for us to have a chat with Daniel, with the curator, with Borja, with the ambassador. So we will be pleased to see you there. We also wanted to extend our special gratitude to Daniel Canogar, Sarah Teichmann, Borja Baselga, Ambassador Hugh Elliott, and each one of you participating in this panel, your work, and also special thanks to Amparo Garrido as curator.
the floor to Amparo. It has been a pleasure to map out your areas of work, just like Sarah Teichman does with cells. And we see how all these areas connect with each other. And even though we seem to be in different domains, we can all translate from one language to another and find a common ground. So you now have the floor again, Amparo. Thank you so much also for having me. Thank you all for being here. It has been a pleasure to listen to you. And shortly, well, we have some minutes. We have a small break, but at 11 and a half, 11.30, we will have the Symposium of Art and Science. Photography in the Digital Age is the title. And I think it will be really, really interesting and it will also tie together with the topics we have had in this panel just now. It will start, like I said, at 11.30, so don't go offline because we are staying at the same Zoom room. And thank you for being here. See you very shortly. Muchas gracias. Un saludo. Nos vemos en Arco. Nos vemos en Arco. Nos vemos en Arco.